ziua! Astăzi, la emisiunea actual, discutăm cu Paul Cameron, doctor în sociologie, directorul Institutului de Cercetare a Familiei din Statele Unite ale Americii. Doctorul Paul Cameron a susținut astăzi o conferință de presă la Infopremiu la subiectul Promovarea drepturilor homosexualilor duce la acceptarea homosexualității în rândul tinerilor doveze empirice. Sociologul a prezentat statistici colectate de Guvernul Statelor Unite ale Americii timp de 25 de ani într-un studiu larg asupra sexualității tinerilor. Studiul este făcut public în întregime, dar Guvernul Statelor Unite ale Americii promovează doar o parte a datelor. Paul Cameron vine să prezinte statistici, statisticile lăsate în umbră de Guvernul Statelor Unite și să avertizeze despre pericolul promovării homosexualității. Pentru că homosexualitatea se învață, așa a concluzionat astăzi sociologul la conferința de presă, bazat pe datele studiului la care face referință. Vom discuta despre acest studiu, despre promovarea homosexualității, despre ce poate și trebuie să întreprindă biserica, creștinii, societatea civilă. Vom avea o discuție în limba engleză, dar vom adăuga și subtitrare. Dr. Paul Cameron, we welcome you and we want you first of all to uh, explain us um, why do you say that homosexuality can be learned or taught? Um, how does the study you are speaking about prove this? Um, yeah. And if you can present us shortly the results of the study. Sure. Uh, the U.S. government has been studying for 25 years Uh, hundreds of thousands of U.S. teenagers. They've been looking because they noticed early on in 1991 that those teenagers who engaged in homosexuality had many, many more difficulties, such as committing suicide, uh, drinking to excess, using Ill illegal drugs, and the like, than those who only engaged in heterosexuality. So they were attempting to change this. They said, we've heard from psychology, psychologists and psychiatrists that homosexuality is normal. So all these excess problems for those kids uh, involved in homosexuality must be due to other kids picking on them, other kids not accepting them. So let's teach everybody to accept homosexuals and accept homosexuality, and then homosexuals' problems, which we uh, say must be caused by others and their attitude toward them, uh, that, that, that will change and their problems will diminish or go away and uh, everybody will be happier. Well, it's 25 years later, and now we can see the results. First of all, the main result the result of reducing the problems associated with those who engage in or are interested in homosexuality, that did not go away. But there was an interesting phenomenon. Whereas before, there were about 5% of kids that were involved in homosexuality to one degree or another. Now, there were about 8%. And that 8% was experiencing the same disproportionate kinds of problems that the homosexuals did early on. So in other words, somehow, by telling all the kids, homosexuality is good, homosexuality is normal, homosexuals should be treated just like anybody else, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, somehow, uh, three or 4% of new kids got into homosexuality and they got some of the same problems, of course, that others that got into homosexuality uh, got into. This almost proves, it certainly strongly suggests, that this is something that was learned. <laughs> When kids were told homosexuality is good, listen, your teachers say that, your principal says that, look at the TV and they all say, yes, 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 it's okay. Um, more kids tried it and more kids liked it. So it looks as though this study proves that what we know about drugs, that is, if you tell kids, 
Drugs are okay. Um, those who use them are okay. Drugs uh, should be used responsibly, of course, but, um, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with anyone uh, that likes drugs and what have you. Uh, if we did that, we know we'd have more kids shooting drugs. Kids in the United States are being taught how to engage in homosexuality. Some from very young ages, uh, often in the middle school years and certainly in the early teen years. We don't teach kids how to take drugs because we're concerned that some will learn and try. And we're doing the same thing with homosexuality and lo and behold, we're getting the same effect. That is, it looks like if you learn, not everybody, but more kids will try. And of course, drug use, anything to do with sexuality is kind of sticky. If you'll try it, you might like it. Everybody doesn't, but a fair number do. And so we've now, courtesy of the U.S. government and all these hundreds of thousands of kids and the training program, we've demonstrated that for at least some kids, homosexuality can be taught. They're engaging in it because of this program. You said in the press conference that the U.S. government does not present uh, the study entirely or all the data um, statistics. Why do you think they present only part of it? Well, they want to present the parts that they regard <clears throat> as the most interesting and worthwhile. From their standpoint, what they did do was decrease the number of kids having sex. They, they delayed sexual debut for teenagers, about five or six percent delay. That's a good thing. But when they did this, it looks like they delayed the heterosexuals. In other words, fewer kids now declare themselves heterosexual. More kids declare themselves homosexual or confused. And when you ask, what did you do, what your behaviors were, uh, over the last 30 days, or the last year, and so forth, what you discover is that more are trying homosexuality, fewer are trying heterosexuality. Now, society runs on children. No kids, no future. And kids come from heterosexuality. A man and a woman generally have to get together unless there's some strange things going on to make a baby. And certainly, as best we know, the best outcomes for children are when they're raised by their natural mother and father. So if we are encouraging kids to accept homosexuality, if we're encouraging kids to try homosexuality in part through teaching them about it, and they do it, and they shrink their heterosexuality, uh, we're not only proving something theoretical, you can learn it, but you also are proving something else theoretical. You can unlearn heterosexuality. You can redirect people's sex and their interests. Teenagers are susceptible to what they're taught by their teachers, parents, society, and the like. Did everybody taking these programs become a homosexual? No, but a significant portion a new portion of kids were stimulated to become practicing homosexuals. And uh, something tells me our society is going to pay for this. Right. Uh, why? Is homosexuality a danger? Should we discuss about this? Or? I think we have to discuss it for a couple of reasons. One, it is contagious. As this study by the, the federal government demonstrates, uh, homosexuality, if you learn about it, a certain number of people, uh, the more they get familiar with it, the more they'll try it. it. It's contagious in that sense. It's contagious like drug use is contagious. If your kids are messing around with other kids that use drugs, your kids are at danger. Drug use is contagious. Likewise, drug use is dangerous, and for many of the same reasons that homosexuality is. Homosexuals are as this study demonstrated, more apt to try and commit suicide, more apt to try and commit suicide in such a way that they injure themselves and have to end up at the hospital. 
they're more apt to early on in life, before age 13, get into sex, get into drugs, get into booze. And while any one act you could look at, a homosexual act, is not per se necessarily dangerous, the, the uh, culmination of all these adverse influences, extra fights, bringing weapons to school, uh, being hostile to other people, uh, these kinds of things all coalesce to make homosexuals as individuals uh, dangerous to others, dangerous to themselves. If we look at adulthood, adult homosexuals are far more apt to get various kinds of sexually transmitted diseases, such as HIV as well as the others. They're considerably more apt to get a host of things that, for reasons we, we can't enumerate, means that they die younger. For instance, Frisch, um, associated with the Danish Department of the Census, established that on average, the median age of death for married male homosexuals and married female homosexuals is around 60. Whereas in Denmark, married men and women uh, die in their 80s, usually early to, to middle 80s. That's a chunk of time. That's a distance. And while you can't necessarily say, well, this particular reason why is why they lost two years of life on average, or this particular, but in the aggregate, it's clear. Even in Denmark, the most, one of the most highly accepting societies for homosexuals, you're looking at over a 20 year difference between, on average, in the aggregate, those who die married to the opposite sex and those who die married to the same sex. Um, in such a context, how should parents teach their children about sexuality? When should they start? How can they protect their children of this propaganda? Well, some of it is to keep them away from the propaganda. If your school is starting a gay straight club, if your school is talking about, well, we've got to have homosexuals come in and tell the kids uh, how good their life is and how they how t stressed it is and uh, to get sympathy for them and to have uh, Meals with them and talk with them and so forth I would say as a parent you'd be well advised to either pull your kids out or demand the school stop it Homosexuality is contagious Homosexuals don't run around uh, like villains with uh, nasty snarls spitting on people. They're they're people uh, some are quite charming. And the question is not whether or not they're nice folk. The question is, are these folk, folk who can seduce my kid into following and doing likewise? Same is true with drug users. Most drug users are not laying in gutters or something like that. They're uh, upstanding citizens who uh, uh, use a certain number of drugs. Every one of them doesn't crash and burn. But in the aggregate, we know that drug users take 10, 15, 20 years off of their lifespans too. They get more diseases of all kinds, and they have all kinds of troubles, many times the same kinds of troubles as those who engage in homosexuality get. To protect your child, I would say you want to do two things to the best that you can, and it's hard to do. We live in a in a sex-saturated society. Try and push your kids towards seeing that the world works best with a man and a woman. A man-woman partnership goes a long way. Not only makes babies, but it makes happiness, really, for, bo for both sexes, as well as the kids involved. And secondly, you want to uh, get them to avoid being around homosexuals, drug abusers, criminals of any sort. Uh, it's the usual thing that most parents already know. But I would say, even though you know this, every once in a while, you and your husband, or if you're alone, you're gonna have to just deliberately say, I wanna kinda lecture my kids or point out to my kids that there are certain things that are good for them and certain things that are bad for them. I wouldn't wear it out. 
our society is already sex saturated enough. But I, I think you have to be a little bit proactive now as a modern family, as a modern parent. Now about the church. How can homosexuality affect the church? And what should the church do to have impact not only on individuals, but um, in the whole society, in the society's thinking mentality? Well, some of the mentality of society is a reaction to or a rebellion against what the church has said. The church traditionally, for really thousands of years, has said Homosexuality is dangerous because it is inherently uh, has all kinds of dangers associated with it and it's contagious. The modern uh, pedagogical scheme is, no, 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 it's, it's just another way of having sexual pleasure. Uh, it's just another way of relating to people. And so I think the church, from a societal standpoint, has kind of a duty to point out to society that the data lifespan, happiness, uh, what people get out of living sides with a traditional point of view. You want people not to say, ah, homosexuality, heterosexual, whatever, whatever you want. No, 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 no. You want as many kids as is possible going into heterosexuality and getting their sexual satisfactions as well as many other satisfactions from that area. So the church has to stand up and point to the data, such as the study we just mentioned, that here the U.S. government spent all this time, all this money, all this energy, and what they f fundamentally got to do was they increased the number of homosexuals, and even though they intended to reduce the problems with which homosexuals uh, were dealing, they did not do that, they just increased the number of kids experiencing those problems. The traditional point of view, staying away from homosexuality, it shouldn't be taught how to do it, it shouldn't be treated sympathetically, hopefully it's ignored, if it's addressed at all, it should be something that kids should be encouraged to stay away from. On a personal level, um, I, I always advise people who are concerned about this issue to think very carefully, and a church that can, is concerned about this, think very carefully before they get involved personally with individuals who have homosexuality as a problem. This is a contagious uh, disease, if you would, or a contagious habit. If you are around uh, a homosexual, if you are counseling them and so forth, you will often find that they tr kind of try to make advances and so forth on you. Are you sure, absolutely sure, that you can't be tempted? Because you probably will at least be given the opportunity. Are you sure that your family and the church can live comfortably with people who are struggling with their sexuality being in the midst? Be very careful about that. It's hard to tell who's going to go into drugs. It's hard to tell who's going to go into homosexuality. And so, especially if there are young people involved, uh, you want to be, I'd say, hyper-cautious rather than not about helping those who are involved and embroiled in homosexuality or drugs. They're both about the same. If you're strong, if you're sure that those who are going to interact with them are strong and are not going to be tempted, okay. But if you have any doubt, uh, pass this on to professionals, somebody who's better suited to do it. Okay. And one more question about the civic uh, society. What should pro-family associations do? What strategical advices do you have for them? Well, first of all, don't think that you can cure everything. There are all kinds of problems in the world. God has uh, set up the world in such a way that problems keep popping up. Sexual problems, non-sexual problems, uh, there's plenty of problems to go around. The church is never going to be bereft of good works to do. Watch out 
from trying to become the cure-all for all of man's ills. Uh, we're only human. We uh, only have a certain amount of tra training, a certain amount of care and time. Drug use, homosexuality, um, terrible, uh, even heterosexual relations are very, very time and energy consuming. Make sure you don't try to do everything for everybody. Uh, nobody can do it. Psychiatry can't do it. And uh, the church shouldn't try either. Thank you, Dr. Paul, for these explanations and advices. May God protect our countries and our yes. children. Dacă aveți întrebări la acest subiect, vă invităm să le adresați la comentarii sau să solicitați studii, explicații, articole științifice.